Discussion on echocardiogram in ventricular septal defect. Parasternal long axis view shows the subbiotic perimembranous ventricular septal aneurysm marked by arrows. There is a small ventricular septal defect at the apex of the aneurysm which is not very clear in the 2D image. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. Right panel shows the mosaic VST jet from the apex of the aneurysm into the right ventricle. Other structures seen in the image are the aorta, left ventricle and the left atrium. Mitral valve is in the closed position as it is a systolic frame. Echocardiogram in a tilted apical four chamber view showing all four cardiac chambers. RA right atrium, RV right ventricle, LA left atrium, LV left ventricle. The perimembranous ventricular septal aneurysm with defect is marked by arrow in the left panel. Right panel shows the reddish mosaic multicolored jet through the ventricular septal defect. Continuous wave Doppler interrogation of the ventricular septal defect showed a pan-systolic jet with a peak gradient of 61 millimeters of mercury. This will be the difference between the systolic pressures of LV and RV. In a large VSD, when the pressures in the two ventricles are nearly equal, the velocity of the VSD jet will be small and hence the gradient will be low. When the pressure gradient across the VSD is high, it usually means that the VSD is restrictive. Here it is a restrictive VST. Sometimes the right coronary cusp prolapse can cause aortic regurgitation even in a restrictive VST. This echocardiogram in apical 5 chamber view shows the mosaic multicolored jet of a small ventricular septal defect near the apex. The cardiac chambers are not dilated. The small defect is difficult to see on 2D echo though it is easily detected clinically with a pan systolic murmur and Doppler record documents the high velocity jet across the VST. Continuous wave Doppler interrogation shows the interventricular pressure gradient as 81 millimeters of mercury which is consistent with a restrictive VST. Small muscular VSTs like this are likely to close spontaneously on follow-up. They will not cause pulmonary hypertension or heart failure and usually have good prognosis unless complicated by infective endocarditis. Natural history studies have shown that small muscular VSDs have a high likelihood of spontaneous closure. Spontaneous closure occurred in 76% cases by 12 months of age in one study. But epical defects tend to have a higher persistent patency rate than defects in other locations. P-value less than 0.05. Long-term course of 600 small and moderate muscular VSTs